Have you ever seen those insanely good copper jobs like a condenser and evaporator coil where everything looks super bendy like a swan's neck? Well, let me show you the tool that makes that happen. What I have right here is a yellow jacket ratcheting tubing bender. Now there are other brands out here, but this is the one I prefer. Here's how it works. You take one of these shoes, you attach it to the bender. You take this crossbar, you attach it up here, which you kind of got to set it down for. What this does is it creates an intentional pinch point for copper tubing. Now, if you've ever tried to bend copper tubing like on your leg or like this or around your stomach, you know that it is very easy that you can create a kink like this. Why does that happen? Well, look at the sides. You see how this is bowed out for this one? Now, these shoes are designed specifically so when you put your pipe on the inside, it doesn't allow it to expand out. So all it does is roll around nice in a long radius bend. Now I'm gonna take this piece of pipe, set up the bender, and show you exactly how to line up your tool to get your pipe to go exactly where you want. So what I set up here is a basic jig. We have our pipe, we have our goal. We need to use this tool in order to bend this copper to line up perfectly right there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my bender, not on, the, not on this line, I'm gonna line it up on the inside of where I want it to go. So right about there. Okay, and just start bending. Extend. Here we go. This is not going well, <laughs> but the result will be perfect. Come on. Right. So real quick, our copper pipe is exactly where we wanted it to go. Now you might have noticed I was having a little bit of problem just testing that tool right now, but let me show you why. This tool is not meant to be used on a bench, meaning I don't have enough room to squeeze and then recoil up here. That's why I was having the problem. If you're on the side of someone's house or in someone's attic, you're not gonna have that issue. Now once you're in this position where you're exactly where you wanna be, the way to undo it is by pulling down Wiggling yourself off, and then getting yourself off of the shoe. And there you go. And this is our finished long radius bend. Using this tool does two things. It allows you to make awesome bends, and it allows you to use less fittings, which means less chances of leaks. Now, if you've never used one of these before, it will take some time before you're able to just grab one and make a beautiful piece of art. Here's some advice if you're looking to buy a bender. Under no circumstances do you buy the plastic shoe. Always buy the metal one. It will cost more. Just buy it. The problem is the plastic ones, these sidewalls tend to bend over time and then your pipes start to kink. They start to look awful and you end up having to buy a new shoe. A new shoe is like 70 bucks. I don't know why. That's how much it costs. Last time I ordered one. Buy the one with the metal shoe. It will cost more. I guarantee it. But you will end up with way better results for a much longer time. Way better investment. Hey, don't go anywhere. I wanna to talk to you about the World of HVAC Quick Reference Card. This is a card that I created for all techs in the field. On the front, it has compressor scenarios, so if you ever get tripped up for whatever reason, reference this card and it might help you figure out what's going on with your system. And on the back here, you have a PT chart for R22, 410A, 134A, and 404A. You also have supply CFM that you can reference for ductwork, and you have return square inches for all returns and filter sizes. You also have our most common used electrical reference guide, so you can always see exactly what amperage, what wire is about to use. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. If you could, hit the subscribe button. It's free to you. It means the world to me, and I'll see you on the next one.